Hey everyone, in this video we'll look at inflation and its relationship with the CPI or the Consumer Price Index. This is a topic of major economic research, but luckily it's easily understandable. So what is inflation? It is the loss of purchasing power of money. It can be generally approximated using the rise of prices in the economy. However, the economy is made up of billions of transactions occurring daily. How could you account for such complex data? Well, there are various ways economists use to simplify this calculation. One of the most common is looking at the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. This is a collection of goods and services found in a typical basket of households. By measuring the change in price of these items, economists hope to capture an accurate picture of the economy and its inflation. To get the CPI data, you can either input the expression directly or use the much easier control plus equals to type in a free form expression. For example, let's get the CPI of the US in the year 2019. Calling it and evaluating our free form expression gives us the following code, which we can evaluate to see it as around 256. We can also call this for the year 1950 to see the change, and it turns out to be only 25 back then. Looks like the compounding effect of inflation really took a toll. We can also get CPI data for other countries. For example, for the entity class Europe, we can access the CPI data for the year 2019 and set up an entity association. We will delete missing values using delete missing. We can plot this data using a georegion value plot, where the percent symbol indicates the previous output. We see that Belarus and Ukraine have a particularly high CPI. Note that the absolute value of CPIs are arbitrary and we only have demonstrated some general visualization techniques. A meaningful comparison would be the percent change, which is what we will look into later. We can also visualize CPI across the world using a geo bubble chart. This will plot bubbles with a size proportional to the CPI of the country. The code is very similar to the previous one. We're setting up a variable CPI world in which we take the entity value of the 2019 CPI for all countries and set up an entity association with it. Of course, we will delete missing data using delete missing. We see a really big bubble in Central Africa and also in South America. We can visualize the distribution of CPI across the world using a histogram which shows that most CPIs are between 100 and 200. Okay, now onto our main exploration. How can we use CPI to gain insight into inflation? We'll first look at the UK and get its CPI data from 1960 to 2019. We will store that into our UK CPI variable. Note that the CPI for countries other than the US only goes by year while the US has monthly data available. We can visualize the data using a dateless plot, and it looks like the UK CPI has been steadily increasing since the 70s. We can plot the corresponding inflation level by measuring the percent change. The way to do that is through taking successive ratios of values using the ratios function and subtracting one such that we only have the amount of change and then multiply that value by 100 to get a percentage. We get the following plot, which shows that inflation was particularly high in the 70s. To see what our code above does in more depth, we can set up a table of x sub i's and apply the same code. We see what's happening algebraically in more depth. If we were to rearrange this, it would correspond to the direct formula for percent change. Now, what about the US? Let's get its data now. The US has data since 1913, which we'll put in our US CPI variable. We can visualize it using a dateless plot, and we see a much faster inflation happening starting in the 1970s. Now we can calculate inflation. Our plan is to calculate the percent change in CPI of similar months across successive years. This is such that we can account for seasonality. For example, the CPI of April 2016 minus the CPI of April 2015, all divided by the CPI of April 2015. 
To do this, we can use the fact that the derivative of the natural logarithm of x is 1 over x. If you haven't learned calculus yet, don't worry too much about this. It's only a technical detail in the calculation. After we take the differences of these logarithmic values, we can multiply them by 100, which then shows us the percent change. We can do this subtraction across 12 months using the differences function, in which we will indicate we want the first differences of values 12 elements apart. Let's plot this data. We can use dateless plot to plot both the data in its original form and the aggregate time series, which will average each one year period and plot the result. As you can see, the inflation is hectic, but it looks like the past 40 years or so saw some stability. You can visualize both inflation based on CPI and CPI itself using a neat function from the Wolfram Function Repository. This is a repository of community submitted functions that range from highly technical scientific ones to visualization ones like the one we'll be using here. In here, we'll be using the multiple axes list plot function. It enables us to plot different axes on both sides of a plot, in turn allowing us to display two different types of data. We will use a resource function to retrieve it. To visualize our data using this, we will first have to standardize our x values. This is because we want only the years as our dates. To do this, we will use the map out function to map the date string function obtaining the year to all the first elements in the data we will map to. We are using a peer function here, as indicated by the green hashtag, to make sure our date string function maps itself properly onto all the dates in our time series. We will map this function onto the one year aggregate of both the CPI data and inflation data. We will make sure to take the date path here to get the raw form of the data instead of a time series object. As you can see, we have a pretty neat visualization with different axes on both sides. This is because we indicated that our secondary axis plot range is between negative 25 and 25, and that its color is blue. We can also generate a very similar plot using Wolfram Alpha. Using include pods will indicate we want the history. We get the following neat visualization, which is very similar to the one we generated above, except more granular. We can obtain this data directly from Wolfram Alpha as well. Indicating we want the US CPI inflation history and the time series data, we can apply the temporal data function to get a time series object corresponding to the data. We can visualize this data directly by using a dateless plot. We will arrange the visualizations in a row, and to get the US CPI data, we will take the first path, while for the inflation, we will multiply the second path of the time series by 100 to get its percent value. This gives us the following visualizations. All right, enough exploration for now. How can we apply this data to a real life problem? Remember, inflation is the rise of prices over time. So we can use it to adjust historical prices. Let's look at oil prices since they are very important to the economy. First, let's obtain the spot oil prices in the US from 1960 to 2019. Taking the values of our time series and taking the span of say the first two elements, we see that we have prices per barrel of oil as our data. We can plot these using a dateless plot, in which we see a sharp rise around 2007. Let's now set up a function to adjust for inflation. To set up a function, we first need to name it and put all its variables in brackets after the function name, making sure to put an underscore after each one. Then, to define what it does, we will enter a colon and an equal sign. In this function, we will take the price V, multiply it by a base CPI value, and divide by the CPI at the certain time period. This is such that we use CPI values to measure inflation, or the value of money compared to now. We will set up the base CPI as the most recent value in our data, which will be around 256. Now, using the time series map thread function, we will map our CPI core function with the base CPI onto our oil data. In here, hashtag one will take the first elements of the data, which are the times, and hashtag two will take the second elements of the data, 
which will be the prices, as is arranged in our definition of the function. Of course, we are using pure functions here to map values properly into our CPI core function. Now we can visualize both the adjusted oil prices and actual oil prices using dateless plot. We see the highest values happen in the 2007 to 2008 financial crisis, followed by the 1980s oil glut. I encourage you to explore this data for more countries and further investigate other measures of inflation.